hey 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 good morning good afternoon guys this is Mawira yeah hi guys good morning good afternoon good evening depending on the time that you're watching this video welcome back again to my youtube channel and today guys I am back yes I'm back in Kenyan soil guys this is Kenyan soil I am not in Uganda I am in Kenya and guys today I'm coming live from a place called Nyeri you can see I still have my bag I'm still on transit guys so I just left Uganda and now I'm in Kenya and uh, I'm here to tell you an amazing story. So in case it's your first time to come across my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that subscription button, turning on the post notification bell and also leave a positive comment. Let me know what you think about the video today. And guys, I am in a place called Nyeri. Nyeri. And uh, I'm coming live from, uh, it's called uh, the National Museum of Kenya, Nyeri branch. Now, a brief history about this place, uh, guys, as I always tell you, like, Nyeri is part of the Mount Kenya community that make, they decide who is going to be the president. And when we talk about the presidency, we talk about the leadership. And the reason why this part is very vital in Kenyan community or in Kenyan history, it is because the people that, who fought for independence, mainly they came from this part of the region, in Mount Kenya. Yeah, so... I am here guys and today we're gonna be seeing, we're gonna be having a chance to see what happened and getting a brief history of whatever happened during the colonial period and how we were able to gain our independence at long last after a very very long time of fighting the colonial regime in Kenya. So I'm coming live from Nyeri, it's called the National Museum of Kenya in Nyeri. So we're gonna be getting the whole story. Then I hope like it's gonna be interesting to know. So getting in. Hi, good morning. Good morning. My name is Mavera. Eric Mavera, but on YouTube you're gonna find me as only Mavera. And um I've decided to visit you today to learn uh, about the story of Kenyan independence and the freedom fighters. Okay. Okay, so guys, we're gonna be checking in, but as they, uh, when I got here, there's a picture that got my attention. <laughs> that picture, she's gonna tell us about it. And I hope, like, guys, at the end of this video, we're gonna learn a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. This is during the time for Obama and Doreva, Kati Obama, and Doreva, because uh, this is uh, maybe a long time before mm -hmm. the struggle for independence. You know, we are not coming in Kuba for land, we are not going to Sure, sure. Uh, oh. But uh, this is not during the emergency period. Okay. Uh, but uh, you start from this. Uh, okay, can I put my bag somewhere here? Uh, Alright, guys, that's my travel bag. It's very heavy, actually. It's going to make me lose weight without even working out. <laughs> Wow, guys, we are going in. Okay. So maybe we start from this side here. Okay. So that I can give you a brief history about this museum. Okay. Okay, okay once more, um, mm. welcome to Nyeri Museum. Oh, thank you. I'm um, your guide today. My name is Jendro Mukire, mm -hmm. and I'm an assistant curator here. Okay. So uh, I'll start by giving you a brief history about this museum. Mm -hmm. It was built by the British colonialists mm -hmm. in the year 1924 wow. and assumed work as a native court or a colonial court mm -hmm. in the year 1925. Okay. So it was supposed to act as a transition mm -hmm. from the old ways of solving disputes mm -hmm. into modern way. Mm -hmm. And uh, by that, mm -hmm. they incorporated the same, same elders mm -hmm. who were solving those disputes uh, in uh, local villages. Mm -hmm. To act here as judges. Oh. So they employed two of them mm -hmm. one judge for criminal cases, mm -hmm. the other one for civil cases. Mm -hmm. So one of the judges happens to have been the founder of AIPCA Church mm -hmm. here in Nyeri. Oh. So I think uh, for them to have met the criteria of being chosen as uh, judges, mm -hmm. also for them being the elders, uh, it's a must that they. They, they were chosen under certain criteria that uh, made them suitable for the, the post. For this post, yeah. yeah. So inside, mm -hmm. we are housing a national monument. Mm -hmm. And uh, inside now, we are inside the court. Okay. And uh, these are the inbuilt concrete seats. It's mm -hmm. a total of that six seats. So these are seats? Yeah, those are seats. What about the seats? Okay, guys, so these are the seats. 
Wow, guys, and actually, it's actually, it fits so well. <laughs> and then I guess these are the, for the judges. Yeah, this, this ones, uh -huh. these are colonial seeds. Okay. We managed, by the time we took over the building, uh -huh. we managed to rescue about nine of them. Okay. So two are left here, uh -huh. and the others have been exhibited at the National Museums of Kenya in Nairobi. In Nairobi. So for these ones, uh -huh. when maybe the... The, the the government, mm -hmm. rather the, the, the whites, mm -hmm. when they came to oversee what is happening, mm -hmm. they used to sit on these colonial seats mm -hmm. and not on the concrete seats. Oh. Guys, they are wooden and they are still very, very strong, actually. They are very strong seats. Okay. Can I sit on it? Yes, you can <laughs> sit on it and lift the weight. Guys, I am not a colonialist, but I want to feel how they used to feel. Yeah, Mr. Kumar, you say like in the in uh, Karatina people are fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now the front part you can see there are five staircases. Yeah. Those staircases are symbolizing hierarchy of leadership. Okay. So with the topmost stair, you mm -hmm. can see that that seat yeah. is uh, slightly raised above the others. Sure. So that is where the judge used to sit. Okay. And from right to left, uh -huh. they used to sit now the assistants. Oh. So the other two edges, uh -huh. those that used to sit there were the accused, the accusers. Okay and uh, the witnesses oh, okay. and now when the judge uh, calls you upon mm -hmm. as the accused mm -hmm. you understand here mm -hmm. you understand here facing the judge mm -hmm. so there is a wooden uh, locker pool desk mm -hmm. that was placed at the middle here mm -hmm. where the files were placed okay. so the judge used to come up mm -hmm. to to, to someone and to the, like, like they listen to your case how yeah. it is how you and, uh, Us, mm -hmm. whose work was uh, to man the institution mm -hmm. to ensure there is a uh, law and order okay. when the proceeds are on. Mm -hmm. And uh, when those proceeds are taking place, one would stand here at the entrance. Mm -hmm. This used to be the entrance, mm -hmm. and this used to be the exit. No. So inside of that entrance, there is also a small cell, <laughs> <laughs> a very small cell, uh -huh. where now the, the couplets, uh, couplets used to be held. Uh, for a shorter period, maybe if the accuser some deliberations uh -huh. going on, yeah. and then they are recalled back again to be given the verdict. Oh. And uh, the second seat here from yeah. those that uh, were executed here, mm -hmm. they say there was also a traditional object, mm -hmm. a Kikuyu object with the name Gedadi. Mm -hmm. And by the time we took over, we never found it. Mm -hmm. It was already taken away, I don't know, by who. Mm -hmm. Like a pot mm -hmm. over the main room mm -hmm. with two sticks crossing. Mm -hmm. So that object was mm -hmm. used to administer oath mm -hmm. those that are pleading not guilty. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you saw by that object and you are lying, mm -hmm. you know you would be released and you would wait for seven days mm -hmm. to see the manifestation of the, the results. Was it that strong? Yes, there was kind of witchcraft performed on it mm -hmm. in such a way that uh, it was supposed to give justice. Oh. You, in, in those seven days, mm -hmm. something bad would occur. Either, Either you die or you, get, you run mad. <laughs> or you, uh, people run mad, all uh -huh. of them in your family, uh -huh. or uh, a car death, calamity, uh -huh. diseases uh -huh. that has no cure. And uh, that, uh, that, that uh, manifestation will be seen on you, your family, your entire family members, uh -huh. or even your entire clan members. Wow. So if you are called upon here, they used to make sure that you don't lie. Because the consequences would extend up to the clan, from you up to the clan. Uh, and uh, there was a uh, fines introduced. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are found guilty, mm -hmm. maybe you are fined or you redo whatever you had done. Mm -hmm. And most of the cases that happened here were more of pregnancy cases, mm -hmm. more to do with civil cases, mm -hmm. na sana sana the, the pregnancies. So there was a point this court was nicknamed the pregnancy court. <laughs> Guys, I mean, like even long time ago, whatever is still happening is just a repetition. That, that confirms the world, like history repeats itself. If at that time they were still fighting about the uh, pregnancy and, and up to now it is still happening. Up to now the, the cases are, yeah. so you know, are still the cases that are leading and also those people maybe who are in jail, most of them they inside because of so, pregnancy and rape cases. Yeah, now the, the, the only difference here is that 
uh, do not uh, lie because uh, when you are swearing a case against the pregnancy, now for others they are inserting those things mm -hmm. inside the pot and removing them. Mm -hmm. But for you who was impregnant and someone <laughs> wants to run away from your mistake, mm -hmm. you are forced to put your man on there and swear by it. Ah, yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know the repercussions. Guys, <laughs> if you are lying, it will never wake up. <laughs> <laughs> That was strong, man. Okay. So one of the most funny things that happened here about pregnancy, mm -hmm. there was a that guy over there. The father used to be a court server. Mm -hmm. So uh, I repeat to him, this he, guy. He's, he's, he died uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So this guy mm -hmm. uh, was uh, this was the father. Mm -hmm. The father was a court server, mm -hmm. and uh, there before he joined the police force. Mm -hmm. It's when now he and uh, uh, con uh, made those uh, mistakes mm -hmm. of impregnating, impregnating six ladies at the same time. Eish. So each of them, because they came from different parts, mm -hmm. brought the case by her own. Wow. And uh, when the judge uh, looked at the cases and saw that they were against one, mm -hmm. he consolidated those six cases into one case, mm -hmm. and he was to face the six girls to answer as one case. Hey, my guy, so, he was strong. The father <laughs> advised him mm -hmm. not to deny, mm -hmm. to accept and promise to marry all of them uh, by evening. Mm -hmm. So when he came here, mm -hmm. they were very surprised to see that uh, they were pregnant for one man. <laughs> and uh, he promised to marry them by evening, all mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. So they were very furious and they walked out on him and he went a free man. Uh, <laughs> my guy, big up. So yeah, he was uh, <laughs> during uh, when he was an administration police officer uh -huh. and uh, he retired as a, a prison wander. So he, uh, he was my, a friend of mine. He told me that uh, as an admini a police and administration officer, he was attached to Mutuati in Meru, okay. and he, he impregnated many of them there. Hey. So they wanted to to chop his head, <laughs> and uh, he asked for a transfer. Uh -huh. He went to Mombasa. Uh -huh. There he did the same. Hey, my guy. <laughs> hey, guy. This guy was very strong. Okay. So, but. Uh, uh, later on, maybe he realized his mistakes and mm. he made his ways. Mm. Uh, he died with the, he had a family. So, like when, like he has many children, right? Like, he has, and he never knows where they are because it's something that I think he was doing it for fun. I don't know. When I grow up, I don't want to be like him. I don't. I want to be a responsible father. And, uh, so now there is another. Maybe if you have a question about, uh, no, okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, at around the 1930s, mm -hmm. this court was overwhelmed by cases, and mm -hmm. now they descended to build the second court, mm -hmm. which is the building right opposite this yeah. building. Yeah, I saw it in Mau or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. so now they differentiated the cases. Mm -hmm. The criminal case judge was left here, mm -hmm. and the civil cases went to the other court. Oh. And, uh, at uh, around 1948, mm -hmm. now you know people are learning to the nationalists and come, yeah. organization and whatever. Yeah. So now uh, the colonial courts mm. were, were established. Oh, this one's legal. And now they built the Nyeri law courts mm -hmm. and they employed two learned magistrates. Mm. So all employees of native courts were retired. <laughs> and the native courts were two, there is this one, mm -hmm. and the other one is in Karao in Yandaro. It's mm -hmm. also a gazette and a uh, site mm -hmm. and uh, it's undergoing some procedures for it to become a museum just like this. Mm -hmm. So for us to take over this building, mm -hmm. it came as a sensitization from the community mm -hmm. that there was someone who wanted to grab this place wow. and develop it into a modern club. So they felt the national museums because that is where we come in because our work is to preserve the culture and everything. Sure. Uh, the felt they should inform us mm -hmm. so that we can come and protect this native court mm -hmm. so that the future generations can come and see yeah, and learn. how it was and how it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Simply because someone like me, I always, I always read this about, uh, about the history of my books, but recently I've been to Kampala and I was able to, to go into one-on-one -on -one with whatever happened to the Uganda martyrs. Namugongo. Namugongo. I have been there. I was there. I left to Uganda tonight yesterday. 
I'm telling you there's something about getting the information from the ground. For example, here I will get to know whatever we learned in books and get also get to know it into details. Now, for example, if this place happens to be grabbed, what will happen to our generation? They won't be able to get this information how, how it used to be. Uh, thanks to you for fighting for it and entertaining it. And now, inside the consists of some other pictures. Yeah. So that is uh, the emergency period. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you don't mind, I can take you through. Sure, sure, sure. So this is a monster research. Okay. It's not uh, my work. Okay. And uh, it's a research uh, by uh, a lecturer uh -huh. from the Glasgow University. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, Madame Beth. Mm -hmm. She lectures there African history, mm -hmm. and um, she embarked on this uh, research mm -hmm. because she felt that uh, it was very inhuman mm -hmm. for whatever the British Museum have put up there in their museum. Mm -hmm. So she is also a member of the Museum of British Colonialism. Mm -hmm. You go to the Facebook mm -hmm. page and King NBC, mm -hmm. you get to know what they do. Okay. And, um, now, she mm -hmm. sampled the detention camps mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, colonial villages. Guys, so, these are, these are, these are yeah. an example of how detention camps were looking like. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, the, the emergency period was declared in 1952 mm -hmm. by Sabalin, mm -hmm. and as a result of uh, the and uh, killed uh, Chief Warohio, mm -hmm. who was, who was a, a collaborator. A collaborator. Yeah. So, and uh, they thought that uh, by that, they, it's like the Kenyans were not uh, ready to face mm -hmm. whatever that they would bring mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the researcher, mm -hmm. she got to know that though the emergency period was declared in 1952, these mm -hmm. people started preparing for this a long time ago, mm -hmm. only that they had not decided when, uh, when. the date to execute it. Mm -hmm. So when uh, that emergency period was declared, mm -hmm. they felt it was the right time now mm -hmm. for them to fight for the independence. Mm -hmm. And um, that is the same same day, now uh, Kenyatta went, uh, there's another site that you can see just around here, mm -hmm. and um, that is where the actual place where Jomo Kenyatta is sent to have stood mm -hmm. and called for a meeting mm -hmm. and announced, I quote, if I hold this bull by the horn, mm -hmm. are you ready to endure the kicks? Mm -hmm. So the bull being the colonialist, the colonialist yeah. and the kicks being now the, the consequences. Yeah, the consequences. And people are called, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the struggle began there mm -hmm. and the struggle also ended there because after we attained independence, mm -hmm. he also called for another meeting and asked people to return from the forest mm -hmm. and they bring the firearms since now we, we have the independence. Mm -hmm. So this detention camp in particular, mm -hmm. currently it is an extra county school, a very nice uh, extra county school by the name Kagumbiri Girls. Kagumbiri Girls, it's one of the best performing schools yes. in Kenya actually. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, that, by that time mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, called Agodi Wax Camp. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there's the word Agodi, Agodi which means thieves. Yeah. <laughs> Agodi Wax Camp. Mm -hmm. Maria Reformation mm -hmm. Center. So mm -hmm. it was more of a reformation center. Mm -hmm. And here, mm -hmm. after you are, you come in, mm -hmm. uh, you go straight to the registration of office where you're booked in. Mm -hmm. And according to how you've come, mm -hmm. the, f the physical appearance and uh, how you present yourself, mm -hmm. uh, that's when they argue whether you are an ant core. Mm -hmm or a bit soft. Mm -hmm. So for you to reform, they have to know mm -hmm. the range into which they are reforming you from. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are an antico, you will be put here in a solitary cell. Mm -hmm. These are tend more like torture chambers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the others will be put up in the other mass cells. Mm -hmm. And here you can see, uh, near the solitary cells, there are police officers. Because mm -hmm. this is the uh, officer's mess, mm -hmm. and here we have the registration office. Yeah, sure. And uh, there is a guard here, and these are observatories. There is one here, yeah. and another one here yeah, at the top. The observatory, this one, yeah. is to oversee whatever is happening from outside. Yeah. So here yeah, they are provided with food, shelter, yeah. medical attendants, yeah. and um, these bricks that are built, they are the ones who are making these bricks. Mm -hmm. 
they used to do silly jobs like they would be done to dig uh, big holes, mm -hmm. scoop the soil out, mm -hmm. uh, fill with water, remove water, <laughs> dump back the soil, just to see the range of your temperament. Yeah. And uh, if you reformed mm -hmm. and returned, mm -hmm. you can go free. And you know the Kikuyus were not learned by that time. Mm -hmm. So they used to hear Kango very. So, in fact, it bore the name for the school Kakumbere. Kakumbere. Only that we twine in English, we say Kakumbere. Mm. But if you ask this Momo guys, they'll tell you it is called Kangoviri. <laughs> because that is where they were going to Kangoviri. Kangoviri. <laughs> so, was this soldier fallen or he was oh, killed? These, these are, these are the, the children. No, it's very hard to tame the children when they are in here. Oh. They tried to remove them. There were many of them, only oh. that they, they have tampered with them. Uh, guys, please, you are, still, you are still on the video, please remember to subscribe and we are coming live from Kenya, I'm back in Kenya, I'm back in Kenya as well and this is the first story that I'm covering after I left Uganda and we are coming live from, it's called the Museum, National Museum of Kenya, Nyeri County and this county is very special because about the freedom of Kenya it all started here in Mount Kenya and it all started here in Nyeri. So this place where we are, it's one of the blessed land because this place never ran dry. Like, is there any time like Nyeri has ever been dry? I haven't seen any time but it has been dry. Yeah. And uh, it's a very special place because uh, it, also, uh, it is also a hub of many sites mm -hmm. to tour. Yeah. Ranging from mass graves, mm -hmm. Mau caves, mm -hmm. Uh, Gazette and dams, there are more than 33 sites and monuments mm -hmm. Gazette and within Nyeri County. Guys, this is Nyeri County. Anything to do with independence, mm -hmm. it just happened here in Nyeri yeah. and ended here in Nyeri. In Nyeri. So there is no other country <laughs> that can showcase about the independence. independence more than Nyeri. Yeah, guys, that's why I was probably telling like Nyeri County is the kingmakers. If, if you are not supported by Nyeri County or Mount Kenya, man, no. So this alone is a colonial village okay. and the more, the, how it is sounded is like the same they introduced uh, virangization mm -hmm. which sounds to be like something very good mm -hmm. but the virangization that they made was that like they, they put people there mm -hmm. forcefully. Mm -hmm. No, it, it, there mm -hmm. it's like they, they are showing how maybe people came with only to settle there yeah. but they were forcefully taken from where they are living mm -hmm. and put up here. Mm -hmm. It was the kind of uh, a tactic cell. that they used <laughs> Prison. to divine the end rule mm -hmm. because now uh, since uh, there was a certain age group age that mm -hmm. uh, were qualified to go to the bush to fight mm -hmm. and the ones remaining were now the children and, and the, the women, women. Yeah. so they were put up in this uh, colonial villages so that they cannot even render help to those that are in the forest forest yeah. and as you can see past the the village yeah. they used to dig wind uh, trenches, deep trenches yeah. and they would put hooks facing up wow. uh, guys uh, these the hooks was uh, like uh, if you want to to access in mm -hmm. you will definitely fall there and these people in the observatory will see you oh. and uh, after they notice something fishy they used to come down here and report mm -hmm. these will go to overseas and they return back to their post mm -hmm. so according to this researcher mm -hmm. she found out that this one heart mm -hmm. was shared among six families one heart one heart among six families and it's around heart and it did not have ventilation there were no windows because they were more discouraged to see what is happening outside Mm -hmm. And uh, here now, so many atrocities happened here. Mm -hmm. And uh, from those that that uh, were in the colonial villages, mm -hmm. they even wished that they would have been put up into detention camps mm -hmm. because here there was no provision for food, there was no medical attendance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is no freedom of movement. movement. And uh, now you are supposed to be here full time. And then you are given just three hours mm. to go outside to look for food, to look for what to eat. And you, uh, as some would go out to look for food, they would be captured and be taken to other colonial villages somewhere else. And some even ended up leaving their children mm. and later be adopted by some other families. And uh, here they were now dealing with the home guards. Mm. So if you mention that uh, you come from a family mm. where home guards uh, were dealing with uh, that. Uh, uh, colonial period, mm -hmm. 
the, the home girls made a lot of enemies mm -hmm. because it's like they were torturing their fellow people. Mm -hmm. And here women were raped. Mm -hmm. And if they refuse to be raped, they will be killed. So mm -hmm. you can feel the tension here. Yeah. And uh, also the toilets, there were no toilets. The, some buckets will be placed behind the hearts. That mm -hmm. is where now you want to go to ease yourself. Mm -hmm. And during the curfew time, those three hours to go and look for food, you will go to empty the buckets. So here also there were uh, the, the eruption of uh, diseases. Mm -hmm. And you see now there is no medical attendance. So, sure. so many deaths mm -hmm. occurred inside these colonial villages. Mm -hmm. And according to the researcher, whatever they have put up here in the um, British Museum, mm -hmm. they are showcasing a very nice village mm -hmm. where people are there at their own will. Mm -hmm. There are slides and mm -hmm. swings, mm -hmm. thereby the children go to play, mm -hmm. and these uh, wazungus are interacting very well with the ladies, making delicacies, mm -hmm. channeling chama, uh, money to their chamas, mm -hmm. all those good things. And when the visitors come, mm -hmm. they tend to feel that Kenyans are ungrateful. Oh. Because uh, if they were given such kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. and they are complaining and demanding to be paid. <laughs> Guys, it's the same same things. Like they will never show you Africa on a good thing. They always always show you Africa like we are we are suffering of you know most of the uh, Western they think like Africa is dying. Mm -hmm. Africa we don't have we don't we don't have food. We have food, we are surviving and we have everything that we need. Actually Africa is the atom of everything. For example, the phone that we are using here. Do you know the material to make this phone is just in Africa, it's manufactured in Africa. Oh. And that's why they are fighting so hard to show, to see like Africa, we don't govern ourselves. They still want us to be under them. Now, even in those colonial times, like you see, like she has said, she is telling me in the British uh, Museum, it's going to show you something different from this. Whatever well, this was the truth that was happening on the ground. Wow. You know, when they came now in central region, mm -hmm. they settled uh, on uh, fertile lands. Yeah. Thus pushing back now uh, the Kikuyus to the interiors yeah. of the villages. Yeah. And um, now, okay, it's true that they will believe that if they come, they, they will uh, improve uh, us Lifestyle. in different ways, like uh, through Western education, mm -hmm. uh, the agriculture, mm -hmm. things like those. But yeah. for them, when they came, mm -hmm. now uh, the Kikuyu started realizing that these people mm -hmm. is like, they have their own interests. Mm -hmm. And um, now they would improve agriculture by introducing these new cash crops. Mm -hmm. But now the Kikuyus were not allowed to plant these cash crops. Mm -hmm. So now at around 1920s, mm -hmm. they introduced the Kipande system. Yeah. And that was to to show uh, if you had that uh, kipande, mm -hmm. you, it was like uh, something you hung on your neck, mm -hmm. a book enclosed inside a metal. Mm -hmm. It was to provide forced labor to white settlers. Do you have an example of kipande here? Yeah, I'll show you. We have, oh. uh, but uh, the kipande we have now is in form of passbook okay. because they later on in 1952 introduced the kipande system in form of a passbook. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was strictly given to those three communities that uh, entered the bush to fight for independence. Those yeah. are the Kikuyus, mm -hmm. Embu, and Meru. Yeah. And the book is strictly written for Kikui, Embu, and Meru. <laughs> so that was supposed to to monitor their movements mm -hmm. because it entered the residential, move, residential permit mm -hmm. and movement permit. If mm -hmm. you were to move to anywhere, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be a uh, field mm -hmm. from your community where you live. Mm -hmm going up mm -hmm. and it was not a must you be uh, given that uh, permission mm -hmm. because you are to cite uh, the reason as to why you are traveling mm -hmm. where you are traveling to your mm -hmm. most probable route what you're going to do there things mm -hmm. like those mm -hmm. and if you give a route that uh, maybe you're supposed to be in Nairobi mm -hmm. and you're going to use a na, mm, Karatina road mm -hmm. and then you happen to follow the Meru Nanuki road or the way and go back to Nairobi mm -hmm. then if you are seen on the other route mm -hmm. you are arrested because you are there illegally. Wow. How do you call these houses in Kikuyu language? In Kikuyu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Are they don't know? They, they call them uh, uh, I think a big gira. Mm -hmm. Because I remember me, my mom and I used to have to live in such a house, mm -hmm. a circular one, grass touched. Because this one represents the grass. They represent the grass. Yeah. And it's always circular. It's in the middle of mud. In the middle of mud. Wow. 
So this this house is exists in some parts of the country. Like yeah. if you go to Kambani, you'll find them. Mm. In Varaka, currently they are almost being uh, done with. Done with because now people are modernization. Done. Yeah. Wow, guys, this is a brief history of how it used to happen. These were the you saw, you told me these were the these are colonial villages. Colonial villages. These are detention camps. Detention camps. And the difference is that in the detention camp, mm -hmm. you are taken there for reformation, mm -hmm. and here people are given some provisions like a food shelter mm -hmm. and uh, also security. Mm -hmm. but, but here, here they were threatened by the home guards, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of rapes and the killings mm -hmm. are here. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, something I I forgot to mention to you is that now the native courts mm -hmm. were not supposed to execute mm -hmm. matters against the state mm -hmm. and uh, treason, mm -hmm. arson, mm -hmm. murder, mm -hmm. those were not dealt with in colonial courts. Mm -hmm. That's why you'll find that uh, though this uh, Nyeri colonial court was here in Nyeri, mm -hmm. Most of the Maumau leaders that were captured were never executed here. Oh. Like the Dankimadi was taken to Kamiti. Yeah, yeah. You find General China was taken to Marra. Oh, the others are taken to Kapenguria. Like, yeah, they were taken to Kapenguria, then yeah. back to Marra. So their cases were against the state. Oh. Yeah. So on the other side, guys, I see some interesting things and I'm, I'm really excited to get to them. Guys, please remember to subscribe, to comment, and to share the video in case you're coming so in. Yeah, I'm going to handle both the signs mm -hmm. at the same time so that we can move together. Okay, yeah. So, uh, up there we have Kisi uh, Mahehu mm -hmm. showcasing the Harambe spirit. Mm -hmm. It was during the era of Moi and Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a slogan that they used uh, to make people come together. Mm -hmm. So down here we have pres the former president Moi. This one. Yeah. He's Making, late. Uh, guardians, you know he was a conservatist. Mm -hmm. So here they were doing some guardians with the students. Yeah. And he's mostly remembered for soil conservation because if you see like the Meru, Nairobi Road mm -hmm. and the steeps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would see those guardians. Yeah, you sure, sure. Right now, you know, some it, are not it, it's still there, it's still, it's still functioning. Uh, yeah. yeah. So he was a conservatist. Wow. And here he had a, pro a program for milk. Wow. I'm also a beneficiary of that milk. <laughs> How was that milk? <laughs> very sweet and yeah. very different from the milk of nowadays. Mm -hmm. And uh, it motivated uh, people to, uh, to join the school because, uh, you know, you would part with a packet of milk, <laughs> a decent meal. <laughs> so then here he opened the Nyaya Awards mm -hmm. in the hospital. And here we have... Uh, Zay. Is it MBJ or Ngaine? The one who was a minister for land, Ngaine. Mm -hmm. That's why you see in Meru, agriculture is on top notch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, do you remember the gabions that you used to make at Mara Space when you were making the clay bath? These are the things that you used to talk about now. So here we have the Mopa and the Peto. These yeah. are Kikuyu cultural artifacts. Called in Deri. And the Kikuyus, they also share their culture with uh, some different parts of the country like Meru mm -hmm. and the Taraka there are some parts of the culture that we share. Mm -hmm. This one was used for pounding grains mm -hmm. and uh, here we have the calabashes mm -hmm. and uh, all these calabashes and guans mm -hmm. are gotten from a plant by the name squash plant mm -hmm. so they are given use according to the size mm -hmm. because like this small calabash mm -hmm. it is used as a plate for small children mm -hmm. it can also be used to drink a porridge and mm -hmm. a beer mm -hmm. and uh, in Kiku they call it uh, kaihori yeah, because it is small mm -hmm. so we have another one a bigger one is called kihori in mm -hmm. Kikuyu mm -hmm. and uh, this would act as a, a plate for an adult mm -hmm. And uh, there are some other bigger calabashes like this one. Mm -hmm. This one was on use, mm -hmm. only that uh, it's uh, worn out. This one was donated uh, by my grandma from the Raka community. Wow. But uh, we do share uh, uh, calabashes with yeah, yeah. the kikuyus. Yeah. These, the bigger ones were used to serve delicacies mm -hmm. like uh, mokimo. Mm -hmm. And... Um, there are some ones, the ones with the leather strap, mm -hmm. they were used to carry mm -hmm. whenever you are traveling. Mm -hmm. And um, there, there are some bigger ones, of course, mm -hmm. but this mostly would be carried by children. You would mm -hmm. carry either water, porridge, milk, mm -hmm. or beer. And um, 
this this is to showcase how these people how these things are bisected mm -hmm. if you want a storage equipment mm -hmm. you cut by the neck mm -hmm. if you want something to drink like a cup you wind in the neck mm -hmm. if you want to obtain a, a carabash you cut it along you know? mm -hmm. and uh, there are some seeds. Seeds, some seeds so those seeds are not thrown away mm -hmm. they also consumed as traditional popcorns by the children <laughs> and uh, adults believe that if children uh, consume those uh, seeds mm -hmm. uh, they would uh, remove parasites oh, like, uh, in, in the pool yeah and um, for us we are learning to know these people these things they have a card mm -hmm. and they have a lot of fiber mm -hmm. so Definitely, they are going to disturb the stomach <laughs> yeah. and uh, your diarrhea. But yeah. for them, they believe that uh, it was kind of medicine. Okay. These other objects is a very special object from the Raka community. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it has two holes. Mm -hmm. Only that it has been overused. Mm -hmm. So at the neck, this mm -hmm. is where you pour the drink. This object is called Nchema in mm -hmm. Raka. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is used to prepare beer. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the entry for the ingredients. So all the ingredients, mm -hmm. they enter through this hole, including the miratinas for yeah, fermenting. Nice. This one is for making the most traditional drink yeah. called muratina. This thing, about muratina, you, know, like you can take a lot of honey and you're not getting honey. <laughs> yeah, because it's meant from pure honey, yeah. there is no yeast. Yeah. It's pure honey. And uh, it was very vital for everyone still to possess this gland mm -hmm. because if you have sons and mm -hmm. they, they happen to marry, mm -hmm. your in law would uh, request you to come to table your intentions mm -hmm. and you come with this in Chema mm -hmm. full of beer. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have beer, yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> so nowadays it has been outdone by the, the, the modern. Uh, the modern stuff. Yeah, these are traditional cups. This one is from animal horn in yeah. Kikui, they call it through here. Yeah. And this other one is from a squash plant. Mm. That's how I send uh, according to the size and shape. Yeah. That's how it, they were given now the use. Mm. And this smaller one is specially prepared for mm. tasting. Mm. Because you cannot taste with a bigger one. Mm. And uh, there is also a smaller one, a very small one. That one was used to store snuff tobacco. Yeah, and uh, you would hang it uh, by the neck. neck and you would not share that tobacco with someone who is not of your engine group yeah guys oh, which is still happens up to date still, still this still is happens. Kiondo yeah. I hear the trend mark now has been taken away from Kenya to China <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we have some coins here we have some coins these are used to, uh, a long time ago money. like me during my time I've used 10 cents this one Ten cent, this bigger one, the ten cent, they were equivalent to one shilling. I've never used and them. You buy a lot of snacks with that ten cent. Okay. So we have a pot. Yeah. Well, that's a traditional pot. And uh, we have a Kikuyu traditional mattress by the name Kifare. It is made from dried banana stems. Mm -hmm. It is stemmed with the soiso. Mm -hmm. Kiriri. We have two types of stools, traditional stools from Kikui community. Mm -hmm. The one with three legs is called Njomwa, mm -hmm. it is meant for men only. Mm -hmm. So as a small child, you are trained if you are a boy that you should not sit on the four-legged stool, mm -hmm. but the three-legged one, because that was meant for men. And for women, it has four legs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's because they felt the women with their multitasking, they lend in the stool that is most on the ground. Mm -hmm. So for the women it is called Morumba. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have traditional beaded uh, necklace mm -hmm. uh, with uh, a blend of bamboo mm -hmm. and uh, traditional beads. Mm -hmm. These ones were collected uh, in the river banks. Mm -hmm. There is type of uh, grass that uh, when that shoot mm -hmm. at the center, mm -hmm. it shoots with the with the beads. Oh. And uh, there we have a singing attire from Kikui community called Dira. This one. It's a blend of uh, saiso, bamboo, and at the waist we have now the animal skin, the cow skin or the goat skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were of two kinds. There's mm -hmm. the one they draw from the palm leaves mm -hmm. and uh, they make different sounds. So like this one, it gives a melodious sound. Now imagine that the ladies are swinging their waists at the same time, anyway. so it becomes so melodious. Right there, 
And uh, for me, I think this place Modern. is Luduli Avenue because there is this uh, music shop uh, up to date. Yeah, it looks like Luduli Avenue. Yeah. So many properties were destroyed, people were arrested, others died. Mm. So it was a very chaotic day. Mm. And it is so Ochuka to have uh, run the country as president <laughs> for less than 24 hours <laughs> <laughs> before Moi put everything under his control. Uh -huh. And uh, he was definitely sentenced to hanging. Here we are having Mamangina having a dance with Jomo Kenyatta. Oh. Actually, Mamangina is still alive, right? Yeah, she's no, still she alive. She was married to Kenyatta when she was very young, mm. at a very tender age. Mm. And uh, I think she was uh, the fourth wife. Wow. Here now we have Jomo Kenyatta as the commander in chief of the uh, front battalion mm -hmm. and during his burial. Mm -hmm. During his burial, guys. Yeah. So these are our old fashioned radio cassettes. I think this is where they spin the, the cassettes mm -hmm. for adjusting volumes and for rewinding. Dabbing, he also used to dab ourselves yeah. with this. <laughs> so. The reason as to why this map of Ethiopia is here is because uh, Ethiopia was regarded as the native name for Africa ah. until uh, colonization took place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it was not colonized. Hey, Ethiopia was never <laughs> colonized. There's a friend of mine, his name is Alpha underscore E. Mm -hmm. Your country is here, and uh, he comes from Ethiopia, but he's in USA. Mm -hmm. At least he knows that like, his country was never colonized. <laughs> So these are some of the bricks that I told you the, the, the initial Sagodi wax camp. Mm. And these are detainees waving uh, after they are released from detention camp. Okay, well, I go there. Eh? Uh, they were being told Kago? you can Kago. go free. Kago. And they used to hear like they are being told in Kiku Kangobiri. Kago Kagobi, that is their place called there's a place called Kagobiri. <laughs> and here we have uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Oh, here. Yeah, so that shows us that uh, <laughs> he was nurtured from since childhood. Yeah. And uh, this is a very special picture because it is for of our former president. Wow. We have the president, the first president of Kenyatta, Kenya, yeah. Jomo Kenyatta. And we have the second president of Kenya, John Daniel Taroiti Charap Moi. Mm -hmm. The land president, uh, Moi, Emilio Moi Kibaki. Nice here. And, uh, here. Yeah. And now uh, our former president, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. Wow. Four presidents in one picture, actually. Wow, that's awesome. So here yeah, we have now uh, some of the weapons that uh, were used during the struggle. Mm -hmm. We have the bow and arrows. Mm -hmm. So for this bow, we have um, detached it because of security purposes. Sure. When we used uh, these young the children here, yeah. you want to Try. <laughs> so we have removed the hooks, mm. the metallic hooks, yeah. and the, the string. The string. So uh, these ones there before they were used for recreation activities mm -hmm. and uh, hunting mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. But uh, now in hunting, mm -hmm. they feel like they can pierce an entire elephant mm. and it dies. Why not human? Use them on human trees. <laughs> and uh, there was kind of poison that they extracted from special trees mm -hmm. that when they apply to the edges of those hooks, mm -hmm. if it pierces you, you will not go far without mm -hmm. uh, collapsing and dying. And uh, these two, we have uh, kept these two here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the original ones have been preserved at the National Museums in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But the reason as to why we are holding these, they were made by a Belgium. And are never learned. Mm -hmm. They were doing the university research mm -hmm. and uh, they made this. There's one that worked and we went with it because mm -hmm. we put a working gun here, mm -hmm. it's a weapon. <laughs> and uh, we were told by the Mau Maus mm -hmm. that there are only three omissions here mm -hmm. for this to work. Mm -hmm. So there's supposed to be a spring okay. to prepare the bullet out. Yeah. And two other things that they don't mention. <laughs> they fear that uh, we, we can we, we can we can go. I wish to know. <laughs> and this one is a kind of a K forty seven or what? Yeah, it looks like one. But do you know the funny thing? Yeah. If I happen to go out with this one, yeah. I will be arrested. And it's a fake one. Yeah, 
they know it cannot function, but I'll be arrested. <laughs> so this is a demonstration. This one the more protesting uh, on release of the political detainees. Mm. You find Wangari Madai he was there. Oh, and, uh, the Nobel neck, Peace. He came from just another protest where the neck was injured. She is the Nobel Prize uh, Prize winner, right? Yeah. Uh. And uh, this is mother to another political detainee by the name uh, Koigi Wamwere. Koigi Wamwere who so is a lawyer. He was a an detainee that particular time. Mm. And they were protesting uh, on their release. This is uh, Bishop Alexander Muge of Erondoret. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a story that uh, he was shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, these were the peacemakers of that time. This mm -hmm. is uh, Dingi Monanzeki. He's still alive? Or he died? I think he died. And this is Motava Musiemi. Mm -hmm. So just as uh, Bishop Muheri of Nyeri is a peacemaker of today, mm -hmm. they were peacemakers of that time. Wow. Here we have the colonial helmets. These mm. are colonial helmets. These are not the original colonial helmets. Yes, these ones in fact were donated by the Rurengo PTC, mm. and that is where the British government had camped. Oh. So these were, were used during that time. Can I put it on? Yeah, you can. Guys, um. So that's a big helmet. It's so strong. Stronger than no, it. We have now a more stronger one. Mm -hmm. So this one was given to a bracket of others, mm -hmm. and more in particular, this one is made of fiber. It's a fiber helmet. Mm -hmm. This one was used by the Wazungus now. Uh, this one uh, looks like the one that the chiefs put on. Uh, yeah. the... So we use this <laughs> one because it is made of fiber. Between this one and this one is more This than one the... is more durable than this. This is made of fiber. Mm -hmm. You just imagine when the weather is very hot, this one will also oh, I get it. <laughs> Guys, how do I look in this one? <laughs> <laughs> they look like Museveni. <laughs> <laughs> guys, <laughs> they look like Museveni, guys. Yeah. It's really true, guys. I don't know what you think about it. Wow. So, and this is a colonial shield. Mm. So they definitely knew that uh, we were going to fight back, mm -hmm. so they were prepared. So these were shield, mm -hmm. and I think they were distributed according to the size of a person, because this one is much heavier mm -hmm. than this. Guys. The material is the height. This one is heavy. This one is light. According to your weight, I think. Maybe the person who was holding this one is no longer alive and I'm yeah. there holding it now. <laughs> so, these three are of assassinations. Mm. With that one for the for Josiah Mongi Karaoke, mm. JM Karaoke, yeah. he's signing a bibliography on uh, his book. Mm. And here, is a uh, on Arambe do, uh, as a member of Nyandaro, uh, member of parliament, parliament. of Nyandaro County, and this is during his barrier. So uh, people do believe that uh, he was assassinated because yeah. uh, he was opposing the government. JM Karaoke and this guy, they are Tomboya. Tomboya. They are dead. Especially this one guy, they say like he was supposed to be the next president actually. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, His and name was uh, Jomo Kenyatta. Pinto, mm. with Jomo Kenyatta. Mm. So, and this is an officer investigating a shootout. So Kamapinto mm. was shot mm. on the chest uh, when his gate was being opened for him to enter in presence of her daughter, his mm. daughter. So he was a journalist, a politician, and also a freedom fighter. Mm. And he helped in the liberation of Kenya. He mm. was for Kenya, though an Indian. Wow. So I don't know why. Why oh. the shooting? Mm. <laughs> and uh, this one is on a Sabasaba riot. So here they were rioting against how the uh, former president uh, Moy mm. was leading the country with an iron fist. Mm. And uh, the ring leaders were Kenneth Matiba, and this is Martin Shikuku. The famous one. Yeah, that's is Shikuku. And Kenneth and, Matiba. Uh, Matiba. He's still alive, right? So you see, prior to the day of the riot, mm -hmm. Matiba, Kinashikuku, mm. even Raira Wandinga, mm. they were arrested. <laughs> and uh, the government thought uh, the riot would not take place. But uh, 
the following day young politicians like uh, Orengo mm. the famous uh, Orengo yes Orengo <laughs> Kitapu Imanyara mm -hmm. and uh, Moite mm. they lend the riot <laughs> it happened. guys so meaning that Orengo has started with, uh, being an opposer from long time ago <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know the, the now they were feeling that uh, Moi was doing things his own way yeah and uh, here now is when they amended the section 2A of the constitution yeah, to make Kenya a multi-purpose state. Yeah. And uh, this is John I thought There are some people who also believe, there are some rumors that uh, people say that uh, he was uh, silent It uh, was uh, something orchestrated uh, geared to answer a certain uh, interest. Maybe, we never know. Political interest. No, we never know. And, um, I'll say something about this guy. Mm -hmm. This guy was a finance minister mm -hmm. in 1980s. His name was? He was called uh, Adamagugu. Mm -hmm. He seemed to have been uh, the only finance minister mm -hmm. who served his term on sick leave. Wow. He was sick throughout. Wow. But he meant to come for his swearing in. But he was sick <laughs> throughout. And uh, he lifted the ban against the public smoking. He is oh. the one who lifted the ban against the public smoking, mm -hmm. and he made sure that uh, those uh, advertisements mm -hmm. on uh, smoking TV. were put even on matatus Hola. and uh, everywhere. And uh, he also uh, made sure that the camp tobacco producers mm -hmm. they put that. Uh, Ban. That ban there that uh, it is harmful to the health. Oh. So you see. And it is still yeah, effective up to yeah. date. And uh, he also he is also the one who insisted that Kenyatta's portraits should be removed from government offices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he won uh, President Moy because of that. Wow. Yeah. Up there we have Wanjiko. Wanjiku now Do you know the reason as to why we are called Wanjiku? No, 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 no. So we Kenyans are regarded, we the citizens of uh, Kenya, we are regarded as Wanjiku. Uh, and it is through this lady by the name Monica Wanjiku. Okay. So he are sending the constitution book uh -huh. and he was at the Fulmano Initiative on constitutional reforms. Okay. During that time of Okinawa, guy in draft, bombers in draft, mm. and people voted, the yeah, yeah, yeah. draft, the Kanako Kwa Diferandam. Yeah, and uh, Marujarita rejected it. So, Wanjiko, so someone asked, who is this Wanjiko? When she was uh, told to give a speech. Mm -hmm. And from there, she was named the representative of Komono Monainchi. Wow. Yeah. So, she's a, he she's a heroine. Yeah. So, here we have the post election violence. 2007. Yeah. Oh, guys. These very young faces. Guys. Young these are and the th people migrating. You know, like if you lived around Kibera, the Merus and Kikuyus were chased away from Kibera. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember everything. This one is, has been cornered and is around <laughs> in the middle of a river. Guys, this was 2007 when things were very tough. Very tough. Wow. This is the swearing in of uh, Jomo Kenyatta in the year 1964. Mm -hmm. And After now, they put prime minister. Yeah. And you see, Pinto was a very close friend of uh, Kenyatta. He's yeah. at the front uh, line during his uh, swearing in. And here we have Mamangina. And also, Mamangina came from a wealthy family. The father of uh, Mamangina was called the senior chief Muhoho. Mm -hmm. And to be a senior chief, mm -hmm. He was someone of higher caliber. He used to dine with the whites. Nice. Yeah. So here we have the signing of the truce between the Prime Minister and uh, Moi Kibaki, the President. Yeah, like I see Kofi Annan. Yeah, and uh, the one for Tanzania, Kikwete. Njokai Kikwete. And uh, you see Baba, they yeah. call him Baba. Yeah. And then this guy, Omaso, Omasoko? Yeah. yeah. And then also this one looks so familiar to me. Yeah. So, Guys, I am a lawyer, so that's why I can I'm familiar with some faces. So <laughs> this guy here, here was the second prime minister right after Jomo Kenyatta. Yeah, sure.
That was after 207. Yeah. After the uh, ground was so much on heat. So here we have the promulgation of the constitution during Kibaki era. 2010. Yeah. Constitution 2010. Yeah. 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 But you know, Kibaki, I think among all the presidents, Kibaki was the easy. was the best. Yeah, he was the easiest. Yeah, we have uh, the first denomination prayers right after independence. Mm-hmm. We have the celebrations of independence. And every community is like, uh, they celebrate in a different way. Mm-hmm. So according to this photographer, he says mm-hmm. these are Kalenjin people. Mm-hmm. And uh, you find even at Uhuru Gardens, people gathered there to eat bonfires mm-hmm. during that time. Mm-hmm. At the time you find Monyao went and uh, put a uh, uh, flag mm-hmm. on top of Mount Kenya. Yeah. I think people are very happy, yeah. but uh, some do say that uh, independence did not bear much fruit because they, 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 they thought mm-hmm. that uh, You know, even the lands that they were fighting for was still remains. Lands, but most of these fighters died poor. Yeah, and like up to they still fight for a chance, even yeah. among themselves. Yeah. What about this bird? Oh, this bird. I think it is a, a, a historical bird, but uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the history behind it. Species, uh, special species. It's a historical bird because you see, it's having uh, our flag. Uh, Ah, f- sure, yeah, sure. It's a very special species, maybe. Yeah, now the tallying has been completed and we have a uh, tomboya uh, and uh, Kenyatta being congratulated. Mm-hmm. And this is Mama Gina. Sure, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. This looks like ministers. Yeah. These are employees <laughs> of... Uh, East African Airways, because you can see the uniform, it's a mm. bit uh, familiar, they have uh, They are cruising so, in bicycles, yeah, and black this, mambas. This building is the National Archives in Nairobi. Yeah, 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 yeah. this is where people go to eat for each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have this guy here. <laughs> so you see they have elected the board there with the results, so I think people came in to see the results. Mm. And the guy had the wall, actually. Mm. Well, so, yeah. Yeah, we have. Here, it is said that uh, after Kenyatta, mm-hmm. the second person was gay. Mm. Here, we have the King of Sanjas in Somaliland. Here, we have the achievements of Kibaki. This is a big super high. Yeah, this was the best so project. So, during Kibaki time, also, the Raka people end to see uh, these uh, modern drones. Yeah. Actually, here, this is an example. These are the police, yeah. police posts. So the runs mm-hmm. and also the, the free education, like it was that. working so well, but uh, currently mm-hmm. I don't know what has happened because even in the government schools, like for me, my kid is at uh, Nyeri Primary mm-hmm. and, and they are uh, paying. from Bonding, we are paying 29,000 and mm-hmm. from this class you pay 12,000 and Aye. you do the interview and you are told to build the school with the 20,000. Aye. And you have to do it. You know, for me, I'm a beneficiary of uh, Kibaki free election. Mm-hmm. I went back to school and Kibaki said, like, let the kids go back to school. I'm a beneficiary of that one. Kibaki didn't do it. He saved a lot of us. Yeah, he's the first voting. The first yeah, voting of electrical card. And you line up against the ballot box of whoever you are voting. Mm. This is the handing over of the instrument of power from Kibaki to, to Uhuru. Uhuru Kenyatta. You see, Uhuru was very light yeah. that time, 2013. Yeah. And here, this guy. The star of the day. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing, there was a time uh, I was guiding some DCIs here, mm-hmm. and I heard them say mm-hmm. the government is very unfair. Mm-hmm. It's like after promoting this guy, mm-hmm. they also sacked him. I... <laughs> and the way he did well, he yeah, saved this. This was during the yeah, you know, the, the, the bombing. Westgate West attack. Gate, yeah. And you know, he came to rescue while not on duty. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he's the one for Fundi House, Osama bin Laden, mm-hmm. in the year 1998. 
So, um, other countries have been compensated apart from Kenya and Tanzania. Because we are Africans. Mm -hmm. So, here we have the first and second Lancaster Conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lancaster Conference was aimed to discuss how we Kenyans would have our own constitution. Mm -hmm. And uh, our representative, this is during the the arrival of our representatives of First Lancaster, Tomboya, Tomboya and Kiano. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one did not bear much fruit because, like, we were given temporary guidelines mm -hmm. to follow which were not written in the past. Yeah. So, in 1962, when Moy went for the second negotiations, mm -hmm. Here you went to speak now strictly on self-governance mm -hmm. and we were granted one man one vote aside from 62, 63 now we vote in our president. Uh. Yeah, we have now the pass book during the emergency period, you remind me I will show you the pass book. The Kipande. So the Kipande and uh, these are being inspected, you see each is holding the book <laughs> for inspection. <laughs> mm, they were traders, this was a, uh, a real hassle. Uh, oh. The sale of a ching on the Kokonga, the Kapanguria six. And uh, these people, you know, when the verdict was given that they were all found guilty, mm -hmm. it's only a ching on the Kong found uh, an appeal. <laughs> and he, he won the appeal. <laughs> so, <laughs> Achiang Oneko uh, was uh, relieved of mistakes mm -hmm. and the remaining five were taken from Lundu to Marura in the town for detention. So how can you say that the alliance went mm -hmm. is that uh, if you are perceived or suspected to be a Maumau or a collaborator, uh -huh. You yourself, you would run for your life mm -hmm. if you know you are a suspect. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. even if you surrender, mm -hmm. it will not make any difference. Mm -hmm. And um, if you run away with your family to make you surrender, mm -hmm. you would come now and put up a poster to scare you. That uh, thing in Kikuyu. Giza kageke. Mwene giza kageke. Angia ga. Kuinea na kana au. Kageke meaning the owner of, of this land. Uh -huh. If you fail to surrender, or fail to explain what you have with the Maumau movement, before the time of July 1955, you shall never dig on this land, neither your children. So if that time frame expires, you would come and now put a replacement with another one indicating the Nakageke Negeviu, meaning the land has gone. So if it is gone, it is gone to the government. Mm -hmm. Or if the government uh, feels the land, you know they used to take uh, the lands that are fertile. Mm -hmm. So if it's just a bare land with no fertility, they were used to to be, they used to be given to the home guards mm -hmm. and the chiefs and the collaborators. Mm -hmm. These are an example picture of uh, uh, these are another detention. Colonial village. Colonial. These are another colonial village. And the funny thing mm. is that the guns were the Kikuyus. So all these were enemies of the Mau Maus. Even after we attained independence, it was very hard for these people and the collaborators to, to live within the community. And these are the women and the These are kids. women queuing for permits at Pumwani. You know, you do not travel without uh, that permit. Mm. Yeah. So here we have home guns at work. The ones that I sent uh, were raping women in the colonial villages. Mm. And these are also Maumau snitches. They were real Maumau, mm. but they were collaborating with the government to identify Maumau suspects. Because they took the oath to, the oath to get the Maumau oath together with these people, mm. and they are the ones who know them better. So for them, they chose to collaborate with the government. So they they get some goodies and favors from the government, mm. and for them, they snitch on their... Fellow yeah, fellow so this is a suspect brought before them to 
<coughs> to identify and they were covered with sacks mm. on the faces mm. so that they cannot be identified by these uh, mau maus because also for the mau maus if they discover that you're the one who have sent them out mm. they used to come and revenge and revenge was to kill everybody and everything within your compound and burn everything wow so this is the famous gun that they called uh, the mau maus called katuo horo mm -hmm. It was a very noisy submachine gun, mm -hmm. and um, they say if they killed now uh, someone from the government, mm -hmm. they made sure they steal this, <laughs> that this gun. gun, and they nicknamed it the Tuohoro. Oh, the, the gun that is inside. <laughs> yeah, the Tuohoro. Yeah. So even when the, the, the government, during their sleep, if they hear the noise of the <laughs> Tuohoro, they used to wake up and run for their lives because uh, you they know, know someone. Mouse, now they used to do anything yeah. within their means. Uh, yeah. This so one. this is the capture of General China. His oh. real name is uh, General China. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So China mm -hmm. planned very massive attacks to its settlers in between 1952 and 1953. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, you declared a <coughs> mm -hmm. criminal. Just as Devan Kemadi, mm -hmm. and he proved to the government that he, he was a, a very dangerous person. Mm -hmm. So, this is during his capture, mm -hmm. and his capture is said to have been the only uh, general who, whose capture was negotiated because for any Momo leader to be captured, the sentence was you die by hanging. So, for General China, it mm -hmm. is seen it is like a negotiation because. Mm -hmm. He was given a deal that he make his troops to surrender from the forest mm -hmm. and he would be given a lesser sentence. And uh, he made about 3,000 of them to surrender. Wow. And uh, you know the promise was that even those that will surrender, they will mm. be given a, a less sentence. Uh, protection. Mm. They will be forgiven their past mistakes, mm. which includes joining a mob movement, which was uh, believed to have been a terror group by that time. Mm -hmm. And also, they will be given a medical attendance. Mm -hmm. And um, so, he felt it was a good deal. Did it happen? 3,000 of them surrendered, and mm. they were all murdered. So that is what meant people that even if you are told the land will go, you run for your life. <laughs> because even if you, you, you surrender... You show up. They might decide to go against the agreement. So they were all murdered. And for him, mm. he was uh, given a more lighter uh, sentence, sentence because now he was sent to Lockdown in Maral for detention. Okay. Where now he met the remaining Kakanguria five, Akina Kenyatta. Mm. So he joined them. Mm -hmm. So he said uh, that uh, his friendship uh, with Kenyatta had deteriorated. Mm -hmm during this uh, negotiation time with the white the the government. Right. Mm. It's like the, the moment felt that maybe he sold them out. In and this is the same, same guy, yeah? Yeah. So... The guy who was friends to Kenyatta. Yeah, so what happened mm -hmm. is that uh, they were not... Uh, their friendship uh, was not... Deteriorated. Uh, so, but uh, uh, China mm. rescued Kenyatta from being stabbed by another miner who was... Uh, Accused there of murder. Mm -hmm. He wanted to, to kill Kenyatta kill by knife. So he saw it and uh, protected Kenyatta. So that's where the friendship now brings back. Came back. <laughs> and uh, Kenyatta taught China how to write in Swahili and English. Oh. So by the time we attained independence, China had written a book oh. on struggle. And uh, he is a writer of, uh, how is it called? Momau in action. Mm -hmm. He is the writer. Mm -hmm. It's a mother novels. He, he has written several novels. Is he still alive? He died in mm -hmm. around 1982 there. Mm -hmm. But now China, after the independence, you know Kenyatta went for presidency. Yeah. China mm -hmm. went for military training. Mm -hmm. So when he came, mm -hmm. he met Kenyatta's government. And he was absorbed in the government by Kenyatta mm -hmm. as assistant to NYS. The mm -hmm. assistant director of NYS. National, National, National Youth Service. Service. 
So that time the director was Griffins, mm. the one for Star and Boy Center. Mm -hmm. So he was the director and he ended up remaining to be assistant director. Wow. So this is the arrival of the coolies. They were being called the coolies who are working on the railway. Mm. And uh, I think they were Indians. Yeah, they were Indian guys. So it's believed that uh, many of them explored the interiors of Tsavo Forest and were driven by the Manitas of Tsavo. <laughs> Yeah. You want the story of the man? Yeah, 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 I heard it. Yeah, so this is the, the trains of that, those, those times, they were, the engines were driven by steam, so if you see a lot of smoke and some firewood, yeah. and the tractors of that time, you see, have you seen the wheels? Very big and metallic. Yeah. So this other picture, it is depicting the Kamba ways of life. According to the photographer, it was taken in 1904. Mm -hmm. And um, the Kambas, you know, they were long distance trenders yeah. uh, with the Kila Chief mm -hmm. And um, they are holding their bows and arrows. And uh, definitely, uh, these are men. See the I, these, these are men. Yeah. They, they look flat, like ladies. They have flat chests. <laughs> now they abandoned themselves. I don't know whether these are this kind of size. Or, you know, they are also good at weaving. Yeah, and the carving. Yeah. And uh, you know, in Africa, mm -hmm. it's a taboo for women to hunt. Yeah, sure. Even to grind on the grinding stone. Oh, yeah. It's a taboo. Have you ever seen, okay, you, you come from men? Um, I am supposed to become. I, I, you know, I'm Meru, but I don't. I have not lived there. I'm not staying. There. I've been yeah. a wanderer. So from where I come from, yeah. and I know a little bit of the Merus because my mother is uh, from Imenti. Mm -hmm. If any man grinds on the grinding stone, mm -hmm. they are punished. Oh, men. Yeah, yeah, men. yeah that only no. So mm -hmm. for this, mm -hmm. they are not to be women because it's also a taboo for women to hunt. To hunt. Yeah. Ladies are men. Yeah, are men. <laughs> I would wish to know if these men are still alive. <laughs> if it was taken in 1904. 1904. Wow. <laughs> so. These are the things, these are other portraits that like, uh, they represent whatever was happening during those emergency time. Eh? Okay. The portrait. Well, these portraits mm -hmm. are of the stories now that are given you about the emergency period. Yeah. I can run it up. And how the Kenyans resistant. Mm. You know, this, the, that is when they formed even these uh, groups that they used to call the Kabirondo, the mm. Antiquity Association, yeah. just to see if they would have a representation in the government yeah. and their lives to be returned and to abolish the passbook and the Kipande system. The Kipande system. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we didn't mention about the Majimboism. It was then that it was now being shown by the Kipande system. The Majimbo, like, uh, before you move from one place, you have to present that permit, that pass. Yeah, you see, have you seen a certain picture there where they are? They are showing yeah, it. They are showing the, the passbook. Yeah. It's like whenever you went, yeah. it was supposed, uh, the book must be updated. Because if you travel somewhere mm -hmm. and in the book it's not indicated you're supposed to have traveled to that place, mm -hmm. you automatically get arrested. Because these are the colony villages. Yeah, because they want them to counter the movements of uh, these wow, wow. ones. You remember even the killings were done also in Nairobi? Yeah. Oh gosh, this is a story about Kenya this and its. The construction of uh, the, the colonial village. There is this a story about um, Kenya and its independence. This was a field work to establish whether there is uh, some remains of the colonial village and they actually found one. Mm -hmm. These are uh, arranged stones. And there's a man here posing for the picture. Mm. Guys, please, if you can get some time to read this, I'm passing it slowly so that you can read in case you want to read it. As you think, colonial maids. So, where is the British uh, Museum? Is it in Nairobi? No, no, the British is in the. They are in the. abroad. Oh, in UK. Um, I'll visit UK very soon. 
the than so if it's if it's true whatever they are showcasing there talks of uh, the different things that happened here mm -hmm. they should uh, bring it back yes, here with the correct findings <laughs> yeah. if they touch out people yeah. they plainly guys this, this is this is the story of general china because, yeah it's general china so they said hmm? she brought these newspapers from British Museum huh? and uh, she said according huh? to what she gathered huh? is that even the newspapers huh? were reporting wrong things oh yeah guys let me sit on yes, the seat right. of the judge the colonial yeah. judge now he used to sit here and uh, listen to the cases as the man who impregnated very many white girls <laughs> around the village I see this house, it has, it must be very... The house is not from the reserves. Uh -huh. Oh, this is... They are gazetted houses, they have been gazetted by national museums, yeah. but they are still in use. Yeah. This one is used as a store. There is one that has been, is being used as a dormitory. They are very strong buildings. Guys, this one looks like it, it is a bit a, a dormitory at the moment. You can see some beds and curtains. Yeah. Very strong. Is mm -hmm. uh, now a current uh, Moro High School in Nyeri. Mm -hmm. oh, these detention camps were turned into schools, schools, secondary schools. Mm. All right, guys. So let's go and see the Kipande. And this is uh, an art of uh, Mudoni Kirema. Kirema, she's very famous. Yeah, she's sister to. Uh, some months ago. Yeah. So she was a field marshal. And. Uh, Mother Nikirima is seen to have derived his passion for Mau Mau mm -hmm. from the Danikimavi. And uh, when she was young, at the age of between 9 and 10, mm -hmm. she also worked for the white settlers mm -hmm. together with the, with the parents. Mm -hmm. They used to provide labor to the white settlers' farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would wonder why they are working for these people mm -hmm. and they are torturing them mm -hmm. and they are giving them. Uh, little money mm -hmm. and uh, from there the, at his teenage she mm -hmm. got married uh, at the Dunkimavi's village mm -hmm. so from there when they used to go to fetch firewood mm -hmm. she would go and meet the Dunkimavi mm -hmm. in the forest mm -hmm. maybe give some information mm -hmm. and uh, maybe get some instructions from the Dunkimavi mm -hmm. and uh, the band year of her marriage mm -hmm. she is sent to have gone to fetch firewood alone mm -hmm. Which uh, was uh, very unfamiliar because they used to go as a group mm -hmm. uh, with some other women. Mm -hmm. And when she went, she never returned. She disappeared. She disappeared. And uh, she was nicknamed the river band because she, was, <laughs> she had a very good tactics of uh, looking for food <laughs> in the forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, these people, I tell you, they were not illiterate people because uh, these were portraits of the Dabiki Yeah. You know, the Dabiki Mabi was also a teacher after the Mabi Primary School. He was a form to drop out. Yes, this is the Dabiki Mabi. Kimabi. That's a portrait of the Dabiki Mabi. Mm. And uh, this one. Mm. After independence, mm -hmm. she has ever been nominated as an MP. Wow. And she was also a successful businesswoman. Yeah. So these people upstairs, they were... They were intelligent. Yeah. They had so much intelligence. Because yeah. these are the colonial seats. Looking... I wish... Let me lift them. Look how heavy they are. It's very heavy. <laughs> it's very heavy. It's very heavy, guys. Where? I think this kind of food nowadays you cannot get it from Kenya. Maybe they are being imported from Congo and some other areas. Yeah, I mean the mahogany or which tree is this? Wow, guys, please. Today is all about Kenya and the, the Spain independence. And uh, I'm happy. Please remind them your name, please. This oh. beautiful mom here, she's the one who has been taking me around. I'm Jindros Mukiri mm -hmm. Kwenga. Mm -hmm. I'm an assistant curator mm -hmm. here at Nyeri Museum. Wow, guys.
she has been with me for the last so you can make an effort of visiting our museum yeah. there are no entry charges as per now mm. so it's a free ticket yeah. and you get to learn more of uh, Nyeri County mm. and uh, on uh, emergency period mm. and stories about Mau Maus. Wow. So right now we are going to see the Kipandi. <laughs> okay, guys, we have a passport. Kuyu, Kuyu, Embu, and Meru passport. passport. This one was for a male. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I told you... Looks like a passport. Now it has your passport here. Mm -hmm. And your photograph uh -huh. and uh, thumbs and uh, your name, your tribe, your district, location, your chief, mm -hmm. sublocation, mm -hmm. occupation, age or age group, where it has been issued and by who. Uh -huh. So it has to be filled with those details. Mm -hmm. Movement permit signed. Now, movement from which place? Nyeri. This one was moving from Nyeri mm. to Kirimokoyo mm. via most route, the one that you will use, you have mm. to indicate. Mm. So, you have to travel between uh, 13th uh, uh, of February, February 1957. 1957. Yes. Wait. And uh, valent between 14th February 1957. So, he was yeah. only given two days. So, for the purpose of Leave to to report to the US on arrival. Oh. <laughs> Movement permit re register entry number and where it has been issued. And you know, oh. if you don't give a satisfactory reason as to why you are traveling, mm -hmm. you used to put two crosses and mm -hmm. indicate and denied. So this one was de denied. I think this one was uh, given the Pass. permission here, yeah. and. Uh, Hey, this one is like almost every time he was traveling to Kirimukuyu. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was for work. Mm. And uh, from movement permit side now, mm. we have residential permit side. So he was to travel to Zawandi Estate. Mm. I think this is in Nairobi. Mm. <laughs> Zawandi Estate. And uh, from this time, the purpose was employment. Mm. Yeah. And a stamp. So it also acted as a, how do you call it? Like uh, if you happen to do something bad where you have been employed. Oh, it would uh, you could have been easily traced. Yeah, mm. you would just cross mm -hmm. and indicate what you did there, mm -hmm. and you would never get employment to any other place. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and you know, mm -hmm. people, some mm -hmm. people never understand when mm -hmm. they mention that uh, those people that fought for independence were the Kikuyus, Meru, mm -hmm. and Embu. Yeah. For the Kikuyus, mm -hmm. it covered the entire Kikuyu range. Oh. For the Merus, mm -hmm. it covered the, the Imenti and Tigani. Mm -hmm. Now for Embu, Kava, Embu covered Embu. three communities. Kamba. The Embu, Bere and, and uh, Daraka. And Daraka. Yeah. So Daraka are Ambians? Daraka, mm. they were characterized under Embu. Mm. That time. Okay, but now they are characterized as but Meru. But each, each, each community had mm. their own Mau Mau general who mm. represented them to the meetings here in Nyeri. Mm. They never came as a group. Okay. Like from Meru, they end in General Mariama. Mm. Uh, from Daraka, we end our own general called General Chui Munai. Mm. Uh, when you come to Embu, mm. the Momo the general for Embu, mm. I don't know his real name, <laughs> okay. but his bush name is a very funny name. Which is? He was named General Kavlio Itin. <laughs> <laughs> so, Actually, that name is well written in the book. So the that's, the, book. that's General Kavlio Itin. <laughs> the name is derived from, you know, he had this uh, expertism in... Uh, Mm. Uh, piercing the white buttocks. Ah, the buttocks. Yeah, he was aiming for the buttocks <laughs> with the knife. So, Kavya in M means the knife. knife. And uh, the other name means <laughs> now the back. <laughs> 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 then, okay, you, uh, that name is written somewhere in the history book. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, looks like an insult, but it is uh, it's the name he earned from his expertise. <laughs> <laughs> yes, from here, then we have this beautiful so, portrait. Yeah, these, are the, these are chiefs.
chiefs from uh, uh, Moranga County. So this yeah. this chief Njiri Wakaranja mm. was a full collaborator of the British mm. government. You see, he's wearing medals, yeah. Queen's medals, mm. and um, at his home stint, he mm. uh, elected a very tall uh, monument flag mm. for mm. British. Yeah, from British government, and the news reached the Queen. Hey. She, paid, she, she paid him a, a visit. Call. Hey. and uh, instructed that uh, as a royalist. Every morning, mm -hmm. the there was to uh, uh, East African newspaper would be dropped by an aeroplane, mm -hmm. and the people were employed to read and interpret for Chief Njeri because he was illiterate, mm -hmm. and um, he was given protection by the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, a school has been named after him. Jerry High School is named after this uh, senior chief. He was a senior. And senior, it is a very expensive school, chief. actually. Yeah, senior chief. He was a senior chief. And he was uh, the most wealthy from Central Region. I guess that's why the reason, uh, even the school, guys, is very expensive. Yeah. Jerry High School is not a small school, it's yeah. very expensive. So, this Jerry mm. and over 30 wives. <laughs> and as rich as he was, he had three cars. Aish. You know, to, to possess a car that time. That time it was. Yeah. And you can see he is, he is smoking a cigar with the whites. Have you, have you seen him smoking cigar by the yeah, way? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So he was a very influential per person. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, Chief Karuri Wagakure. Yeah, so Karuri Wagakure is a uh, warrior. Mm -hmm. Karuri was not a believer of, of Christ. In fact, <laughs> mocked in Jesus and said that he had powers than him. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, he, he was said to have pra been practicing witchcraft until now the coming of the missionaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, one sister, I hear people say that it was sister uh, mm -hmm. Maria Carora who was beatified by Mary as a saint. Mm -hmm. So she convinced him to get him <laughs> to, to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. And here is during his baptism with his wife. So he was named, he was given a baptism name mm -hmm. by the name Joseph mm -hmm. and the wife Mary. Mm -hmm. the, the, the names of the mother and the father of Jesus. Jesus yeah. And here they are posing a, a photo. And uh, this is uh, Wango oh, Abakeri. Very famous lady. Yeah, so this lady hails from Muranga. And he was the second wife of a man by the name Makeri Wambogo. Mm -hmm. So Wango wa Makeri mm -hmm. was having a secret affair with the chief Karuri Wagakure. <laughs> and, uh, side chick. Yeah, side chick. Mm -hmm. And uh, Karuri to appease the husband. Mm -hmm. So gave uh, the husband now uh, a chance to become a chief. And uh, he declined. He mm -hmm. didn't buy the idea. And uh, Wango mm -hmm. expressed her interest. And that's how he ascended to the chiefdom. Mm. And uh, when he, she ascended to that chiefdom, mm. she went against each and everything that the men had said. said. <laughs> and uh, if you made noise mm -hmm. in her barazas, mm. you would bend you over mm. and sit on you until the baraza ends. <laughs> and uh, that's why the song Wangu wa Makeri Ewa Makeri Yangu Ikari Raduri Ewa Makeri It emerged from her behavior of sitting on men's back <laughs> And uh, you would also give them punishments to work on her farm And uh, now the last one that uh, may, uh, saw him now being forced to uh, Her being forced to resign mm -hmm. After seven years of her ruling is that she engaged in a certain dance, which was danced in the community, community mm -hmm. by only men and were stripped naked. Naked. So it was called Kebata dance. Mm -hmm. And as these men were singing naked, mm -hmm. Wango stripped off her clothes ah. and danced with the chief Karori. So men were very furious and insistent, now enough is enough, she should resign. Ah. So that's how she resigned after seven years of her ruling. And people tend to say that uh, Wango mm -hmm. opened the eyes of women. <laughs> Though whatever she was doing was not right, it was control, it meant to contrary. Women to realize that these men, they were discouraging them from doing things that are of benefit to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they, they say they sponsor them. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Guys, she's the, it is say like she's the mother of she's the mother of every single thing that you know the sponsor the sugar daddy stuff. She is the one <laughs> the mother of it in Africa in Kenya actually. <laughs> And now the the Kikuyu women now mm-hmm. people now have started saying that uh, uh, like the speed of uh, uh, Makiri is still living. They say if you get a Kikuyu lady, mm-hmm. uh, they, they say they will like sit on you, sit on you. They are like, they gonna control you. Control you, mm-hmm. and they they say they, they have heard that uh, uh, they that emotion from what Wango was doing. So guys, history repeats itself. It is true. They are found. So these are the ones, these are achievements of the missionaries. Wow. So when the missionaries came now, okay, not all these uh, these uh, utensils that were used, the guans and the calabashes were used for Digital. witchcraft things. Mm-hmm. It's only that there was this special one of this shape mm-hmm. that was used by medicine men. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the medicine men that particular time were, 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 were not uh, dangerous people. Mm-hmm. In fact, we, we were used to help people yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to heal their diseases and some other things. And uh, when the missionaries came, the mm-hmm. Jews feels that they made them mm-hmm. uh, lose their culture by burning and declaring those objects that we were using uh, as a witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah. But some, in some communities, uh, those things are still being used to like, and they're still being active the Meru people, the Raka people the Mbere, the, the Kikuyus there are some places where these things are being used and, and they're still very active currently now mm-hmm. the value for these uh, cultural things have uh, raised higher mm-hmm. because of the introduction of the CBC curriculum mm-hmm. and uh, you can see them in these big hotels now they are serving porridge with the calabashes yeah. Yeah, people have started appreciating back again the, the culture. Yeah, guys, like uh, you can remember when I went to the body of my friend, I, I lost one of my best supporters, she's a mom and a friend. And uh, when she died, the sister went to see her, the sister was a pastor. So you were burying two people at the same time in Meru. And uh, at that body, we were served some food and some porridge through the Karabash, guys. So if you remember that video that I, sh- I shared when we went for the burial of the heart of African like you remember how it was served out when you are taking the porridge you are using this carabash yeah but they have a name in Meru it's only like I don't remember the name in uh, it's something casually something something I don't remember the name but uh, as she's saying like these things are coming back though because the people cannot get the, uh, the traditional they are using the artificial nowadays yeah so this I bet this video has been long enough and uh, she has been so much of help and I guess I'm gonna run a short clip of whatever the pics here of the, those traditional leaders then you're gonna know whatever was happening and then I wanna say a big thank you for you for being there on the premier gang thank you for being there my mods thank you so much even for you as a returning subscriber I wanna say a big thank you for always coming back to watch my video and uh, to, support, to subscribe on my youtube channel we are coming live from Nyeri at the National Museum of Kenya in Nyeri County whereby we are learning about the history and the fight for freedom for Kenya. This is where it all started. It started in Nyeri and it also ended in Nyeri. And then uh, like from where here where I'm standing to the first president home is not far, right? Yeah. It's not far. The first president of Kenya came from this region and from where I'm standing it's not very far. Even the third president. Even the third president, even the current deputy president is from this, this region. So this region is well, well, well respected. It's a region like everybody will always want a piece of this land. And uh, man, it's just a blessed land. This place never dries up. It's ever, ever green because it is on the highlands of Mount Kenya. From here to Mount Kenya is not very far away. And actually we also have some other beautiful places that you can visit when you come here. We have some like Abadea National Park. We have, we have very many beautiful places to visit when you come to Nyeri. Guys, and uh, from my side here, I see the pictures of this one. Uh, uh, who's China? Oh, the Danikilani Kimadin is youth. He, was still, he, he looks like Peter Salasia. <laughs> first picture after he was captured. Mm-hmm. This is the most famous picture, actually. Yeah. These two. And uh, this is uh, the wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and uh, this is a Maumau general by the name General Kariba. So they are, we have Kazeta and Kariba camps in mm -hmm. Marotuans, Karatina, mm -hmm. which he used as his command base. Mm -hmm. So this guy was captured in mm -hmm. 1954 and murdered in cold blood. Wow. This is the gallop that was used to kill the, the Maumaus and mm -hmm. the sympathizers. These are the watchtowers? Yeah. And these are some bones that have been. Oh, no. the wow. And the Mau were returned as a Only. terrorist <laughs> at that time until now the then President Moi Kebaki is the one who removed the notion that they were terrorists and now they are called heroes. And from <laughs> Moi Kebaki, mm. we saw now the Mau Maus have been respected mm. and even some are getting compositions. Mm. Yeah. So this was and Dan Kimadi's secretary. He is the same same person here. Mm. They used to have lots. These are Kikuyu suspects being rounded up mm -hmm. after security operation. They, this is in East Lansen, Nairobi, 1953. Mm -hmm. Suspects are taken away in army trust. In detention camps. camps. Some never to return. Wow. Some will die on the way. Like uh, Momo, the, the Momo general from. Uh, Varaka. Mm -hmm. He died on his way to Manyali for detention. Okay. So most of these cases will be captured when mm -hmm. you die on the way or mm -hmm. you die there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And guys, you have the across there you can see the office for the Maumau. Guys, you have some very old people there. Those are believed to be the like uh, the Maumau. Yeah, some are Maumaus and descendants or descendants of Maumaus. Yeah. And uh, they, are, they are holding some meetings because uh, there is this rumor that now the, the, the government wants to start uh, giving them some partial compensations. Mm. So they are coming here day, to register the day mm. to discuss on uh, the matters concerning those payments that will be made. Wow. Yeah. And actually, my, my great grandmother is still alive. My great grandmother is still alive. She's almost 100 plus years. She's supposed to be that good. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, man, I want to say a big thank you in the video that I come back. So guys, I want to say a big, big thank you, man, for today's video. It has been super, super special for me. Just immediately from Kampala to Nyeri, to the National Museum of Nyeri, man. I want to say a big thank you for watching the video. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for coming back. So guys, thank you so much. I hope like this video has enlightened us. Like, like you, today there was no much of entertainment, but uh, we have learned a lot. Guys, even before I end the video, I see some, some butterflies here. Okay, these butterflies, they have reminded me of a meme that I saw, like, uh, you know, like, the current president of our country is, like, he's making promises, promises, promises. So, like, a, so I saw a post saying, like, uh, the government has set aside 2 billion uh, butterflies for children to play with. <laughs> now I see the butterflies flying all over here. So, guys, anyway, I want to end this video from here and show you these beautiful flowers from Nyeri County. The most blessed land of Nyeri County. So I'm say big, big thank you for watching the video. Please remember to subscribe to turn on the post notification bell so that you can be notified anytime I post a new video. So guys, see you on the next one. My next, my mods. Thank you so much for being here. I really love you, guys. Thank you. See you in the next video.